A very good evening to one and all. Welcome you all to UGC NTA NET Paper 1 session for June 2024, wherein we have the questions on the recent topics on the unit communication. And this in this particular session, we are going to see the question on the topic that is principles of communication. This all questions which have been brought up to you is, you know, all are sorted out from all the recent papers, recent examinations, uh, previous cycle and get presented to you so that you can get a lot of uh, uh, information and questions, uh, you know, prepared and you can accordingly do your best in order to crack your examination. Before you start, uh, before we start with the session for the day, a very important announcement that our new batches for UGC uh, NTA Net on app live will be starting, you know, from 26th of Feb how to join the sessions, how this particular uh, sessions will be. All this will be given to you at the end of the session. So just make sure that you are staying tuned till the session gets over, attempting all the questions, putting your scores across and learning a lot of important things, right? So here comes the first question. Now, this first question is based on, you know, the question number 11 because we have already done 10 questions for this topic. So question number 11 says that the interaction between a teacher and a student creates a zonal proximal. So this is basically the topic is taken from combining two units. One is your communication and one is your teaching aptitude. So it says that any interaction between a teacher and a student creates a zone of which proximal? A differences, a confusion, a development or distortion. Okay. Any, any, any interaction between a teacher can lead and a student can lead to differences can it lead to confusion can it lead to development or can it lead to distortion you know or diverting from the track so if you know the concept of zone of proximal it will be able to clear to you and you will be getting the answer very correctly but if not so let me first explain you the zone and then we'll come to the right answer okay actually this is the zone which is you know which was brought by Lee Vitigosi and he has, you know, brought up a concept called as zone of proximal development. It means in some books, this diagram is given in the form of this particular intersection of two circles also. So this one and this part, okay. So this is the part which a particular uh, student or a particular batch, uh, individual student uh, in the form of a batch knows. On certain uh, aspects, you know, certain things he do not know. So certain certain things he knows, certain things he do not know. But what about, you know, what about the things which he wants to learn and which he wants to know about? So in such cases, his peer groups, okay, helps him, helps him to understand what exactly is not known by him. So that 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 makes the things very clear with the help of his uh, his peer group. So they try to create this zone of development by giving us some amount of scaffolding. We have learned this in teaching aptitude. It means nothing but a support, and this support will be staying till the time the individual learner learns. The moment he learns and he can develop very well. The support is taken out. Okay. So it means that that support is nothing but the zone of proximal development. Things a learner which can which he can do on his own, and things the learner which cannot he cannot do. But it can be brought together with the help of his peer groups where things the learner can do with the help of either his educators, the teachers, or with the, with the help of his peers. Okay. And that zone is nothing but it is called as zone of. Yes, zone of development. So if you can see the question, the interaction between a teacher and a student can always create a zone of what? A zone of development, a zone of progress, a zone of growth or a, uh, you know, always seeking uh, something new or learning something new, right? Coming to the next question, question number 12, which of the following will help to overcome the barriers? So what will help you to overcome the barriers from this following? So if you do a focus listening, if you neglect the structure, the semantic structure, if you top down command structure, if you use of, you know, clutched idioms. So which of them will help you to overcome the barrier? It means to, you know, 
to successful, successfully conquer the barrier. So barrier is again itself is nothing but an obstruction. So what you should do, you know, which will help you to remove that barrier. So you should neglect something, definitely not a top-down approach. It is, you know, it's very centralized approach and you cannot learn anything in out of it. A cluster idioms, uh, too much of complexity will be created. So definitely when you are trying to overcome the barriers, the one thing which you have to do is you have to have the focused listening. That will help you to overcome your barrier you know, uh, go away with your barrier and try to help you to get the clarity on the things, right? Coming to question number 13 now, which of the following principles is useful for establishing good communication? This we have done, we have done in fact and, you know, in, in a very general uh, way in previous question also. So it is talking about the principles which is useful for establishing good communication. Principle of feedback, attention, balance or none of the above. So which is that uh, principle which will help for establishing a good communication? Means something which will help you to lead uh, ahead, which will help you to move ahead. So if you see feedback, attention, balance, none of the above, all look similar. But something which will really help you for the best, you know, guidance for communication, it is a feedback, a constructive feedback, a very, you know, a well, well said feedback will help you to take the communication ahead will help you to guide with the communication rather than attention balance. So feedback is something which is de definitely useful for good communication, right? Next question, actively listening, reading or viewing information to gain a complete understanding of the message. Which of the following has been referred? So if you want to get a information on listening, reading, viewing clearly, which should be, you know, referred? Critical listening, academic writing, revising editing audience awareness which should be in a very clear 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 form it should be a critical listening it should be academic writing skills so if you see we want you know we want everything sorry okay we want everything we want listening also we want writing also we want reading also viewing also so out of all this which will help you to you know uh, being referred so if you look at all the options very carefully and come down it is only and only listening, okay, listening which will help you a proper way of actively participating, reading it, viewing it, writing skills, revising skills or awareness will not give you, you know, a clear, accurate understanding that much will be given by what will be given by your critical listening. Critical listening, it means listening for your own uh, development, not for criticizing, but for your own enhancement, right? Okay. Coming to the next question, an understanding of an ability to use the gestures, the expressions and non-verbal clues to communicate, which of the following is referred? So same question they have given now, but they are asking that if you want to do the same thing in the form of non-verbal clues, so what attention you will go more for? So we will you give more attention for critical listening? personal presentation, revising or presentation of technical or scientific data. So if you want to, you know, if you want to understand and use a proper gesture, expressions, you know, and clues in order to communicate a message, which of them will be considered as, you know, the following accurate one? Is it will be listening? Is it presentation? Is it revising? Is it, you know, a technical or scientific data? So if you want to emphasize more on non-verbal clues, so definitely your presentation of body and language will be something which will be always referred to, which will always be uh, at the top, right? Now, the same question now, see, now how the one question has been changed, you know, with uh, different, different uh, outcome. And understand, Standing of use of images, graphs and other methods uh, to present the data simply, okay, which of the following is referred. So when you want to understand the use of images, when you want to understand the use of graph or an, any other method, which will be used, the critical listening, 
पर्सनल प्रेजेंटेशन रिवाइजिंग एंड एडिटिंग और प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ टेक्निकल और साइंटिफिक डेटा विच ऑफ देम विल बी यूज यू नो इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड द इमेजेस द ग्राफ्स और द डेटा प्रेजेंटेशन मेथड सो फ्रॉम द बिलो और फ्रॉम द फॉलोइंग द वन विच विल बी यूज in order to you know uh, understand the images graphs and methods will be what will be the presentation of scientific data so scientific data will be one which will cover your images use of images graphs and other methods in the following list right now coming to the next question major limitations of mass communication see we know that there is something called as intercommunication intra communication mass communication public communication group communication but they are emphasizing on what only on mass communication so which of them becomes a limitation which of them becomes you know a disadvantage so the success of the program mainly depends upon the procedure more time is required to produce the message the feedback is weak or it is very costly for the receiver so what is the limitation major limitation this if you remember i have when i have taken the first round of questions i have always uh, told you in fact yesterday on app when we did you know linear models at that time i have taken this also example of mass media and told you so what becomes that comes under transactional you know a uh, model so we studied three models transactional linear and interactive and that time i gave you this example of mass media so what is you know the limitation whether it is the procedure whether it is the time to produce the message the feedback or the cost uh, the cost impact so if you have uh, attended the class yesterday and if you know the important point of this definitely the answer will be very correct the limitation of a mass media major limitation its feedback system which is very very weak there is no uh, assurance whether the feedback will come or not and unless and until it does not comes the limit that that the communication cannot be you know uh, given a proper accurate feedback yes now the tv channel which launched for covering engineering and technology subjects so there is a specific tv channel which was launched in order to cover engineering and technological subjects was it gyan darshan the vyas the eklavya or kisan which of these uh, is coming under as a tv channel for covering the engineering and technology subjects so if you know very well again okay this is covered in your teaching aptitude also the win one which was uh, launched for covering engineering technology was none other than you know vash uh, sorry eklavya channel i have just written all the details over here so basically eklavya channel i have given you is a distance initiative which has been brought up by iit and ignu the main objective is to make sure that the audience you know get the classroom virtuality at the doorstep and so jad this channel is something which is dedicated to use the technical programs gyan darshan is an educational tv channel focusing on all the branches vyas is 24 by 7 uh, you know transmission which is based on educational content for undergraduate subjects in order to support the classroom teaching but when it comes to engineering and technology it is eklavya okay coming to question number 19 gang plan now this this concept is something which comes under management so any management students over here will definitely understand this concept very well gang plan implies which type of communication quick vertical horizontal or none of the above so gang plan is nothing but it is one of the management principle called as scalar chain given by henry fiol out of the 14 principles so it says that gan plank says that the communication which implies okay what type of communication it implies it implies basically the quick communication now how i came to the answer directly because maybe many of you are not aware of this concept so let's see so this is a scalar chain now these are the employees so if f wants to pass on the message to g basically it goes to d it goes to b it goes to a and then it comes to you know from top to down approach so now this is you know a huge amount of time can take you know and it is not possible to give a very quick message you have to go through across all these chain so if it is a quick communication it is given a a free hand is given for the form of gang plank where a can directly reach to g 
give the message and then later on can inform all the people you know uh, in the hierarchy that they don't have to you know uh, wait for any orders because now they can just continue with the uh, priority and accordingly they can keep on informing the people in the loop yes coming to the next question the last question for the day communication is quite common between line and staff functions in the form of what crosswise horizontal vertical upward so which type of communication do you see between a line and staff function which type of communication is available between a line or a staff so whether it is crosswise whether it is horizontal whether it is vertical or upward out of all these the one which is you know quite common between line and staff is something called as horizontal see it's same department no line and staff so horizontal communication is something which is very common between the line and staff is it clear okay all those who really wants to join the uh, class and make sure that you really want to crack your examination so we have our app on the google play store download the app register yourself with the registered mobile number make sure that you are going to the course one once you enter the course you will be seeing all the content only after paying the fees you will be getting an access to this content wherein everything you know the live lectures the recorded sessions everything are in the app and you can go through this and start preparing yourself any doubt to reach to here you can get in touch on the whatsapp number that's all we have for the day thank you everyone tomorrow we have class uh, live on the app and we have you know class on youtube that is on friday so see you soon and make sure that your preparation goes on well and thank you everyone so see you in the next class thank you